Intel's turning 40 this year, and it's still a disruptor. It's still a keeping Moore's Law alive. It's still bringing the heart of innovation to Silicon Valley. So many great things happening, and not just at Intel, but Intel teaming up with other people, uh, you know, making things together. That's what I think is really the great part of working here. Back in January, Paul Odellini was a keynote speaker at CES, at which time he introduced a term I hadn't heard before called the personal web. Uh, I asked him, what does that mean? And what does it have to do with Intel? And what difference does it make to me? The internet becomes a lot more useful to all of us when things come to us. I mean, the, the way we, we use the internet today is we search for stuff. We go out on the internet, we look for something, we, you know, we find something, we find information, we find friends, we find a contact, we find a purchase, a book, whatever. Um, ultimately, you'd like to be, able to be able to reverse that process, to have the context awareness of, of what you need, where you are, what your preferences are, all built into your machines. And then have those, and then have those make the web available to you. So things come to you, information comes to you when you need it, without even having to ask. That's the notion of the personal web. That's what's changing. We're seeing that. You know, it is not just about the technology all the time. It's a lot about what's going into the technology, and then what people are doing with the technology. That's kind of where the world is, and that's a, that's where we're going. Intel inside. We've heard that phrase probably for half our lives. Uh, the microprocessor from Intel is probably the most branded uh, electronic component in history. Um, but what is going on inside Intel regarding social media? How is it changing the culture inside uh, Intel? How is it helping to make better products for the future? There's about 2,000 bloggers at Intel today. Anyone who wants to blog can get a blog account. We, we don't restrict it. Yeah, I really believe inside Intel that we ought to be getting more and more of our people involved, feeling empowered, go out and share their stuff. And what we do is teach them how to do that. We give them examples of people who we like who are out there, like yourself, um, who are using these tools very well to connect with people, to share, to learn. People have questions and, and problems and other people have the answers a lot of times. Well, I think you see it a lot within our, uh, it's growing in importance within the Intel employee, within both our employees, uh, between people collaborating and communicating with each other, as well as uh, them reaching out and involving and listening to our customers. Uh, I think you'll see that happening more and more. No, I actually have really started learning about this maybe about four years ago, and so there were a whole bunch of pioneers involved back then and they were more doing it on their own and trying to teach the RIT folks what is possible and there were some roadblocks but there were also some great achievements they created a wiki internal wiki called Intelpedia which has become a great source for us now a uh, guy by the name of Josh Bancroft did that a lot of people follow Josh he's a wonderful guy Lo teaches us how to use the tools and how we can really share and connect with people that we like and share our interests Intel was one, one was an early adopter of email, and as a result, never embraced things like voicemail. And I find it's much more efficient. I mean, because of the asynchronous nature of email and the one-to-many nature of email has given us the ability to, um, you know, communicate very freely and widely within the company. Lots of stuff is known. Lots of people engage, and I think it's just a short step from that. To start, to start going to IM and then, and then, and then to social networking. This was the first time I met with Paul Odellini, but in fact, in 2005, he rejected uh, a request on my part for an interview. Uh, I wanted to talk to him about uh, while writing Naked Conversations. I want to ask Paul about um, an internal blog he was supposedly doing, um, a periodic uh, post to all 86,000 employees. Uh, he'd ask them not to share what he said on these blogs uh, to the outside world. One time it happened, that was just about when I was asking Paul for the interview, and one employee post, got one post into the hands of the San Jose Mercury. Odellini, 
uh, instead of shutting it down or screaming or doing a witch hunt, simply said, please don't do it again, and no one did. So I asked Paul about the blog. I have many ways I communicate with employees. I have webcasts. We have you know, things I write on, on our, on our uh, online uh, newspaper, which is called Circuit. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, when I give a speech or something, it's all broadcast to the employees. Uh, every now and then, though, I have a thought or a comment I want to make on something that is topical. And I find the blog is a good way to do it because it allows for me to be able to communicate but also get instantaneous responses. I mean, when we get, you know, tens of thousands of people reading it and hundreds of people responding to it, and then I can selectively decide to respond to people after that. So it works better than, than you know, say, webcast technology, which has online Q&A because it's asynchronous. And, uh, you know, lots of times they'll comment back, uh, kind of forgetting that I'm still in the string somewhere along the way. And uh, every now and then someone will say something that, that uh, compels me to respond to them privately, uh, which I'll do. And because sometimes I don't want to, you know, say something publicly in front of tens of thousands of people. So, like, you know, very often I'll chime in on the blog and say, well, my view is this. But sometimes I'll say, hey, Joe, you, you sent a note, uh, you had this posting. This is my thought on this. Why did you say that? You know, can we talk about it? And we, we, we we'll have a dialogue on email privately, which I think is a very interesting way to, to, to make the blog work uh, a lot more proactively because some things should be one-on-one -on -one and not necessarily one-on-many. Well, I was fairly impressed with the story I heard, but where's it all going? What's it look like in the future? I asked. Uh, you know, my, my daughter is a Facebook fanatic. And uh, I, you know, go on to monitor her site as all, as all good parents ought to do. But what I find is that it's it's pretty boring. And what I what I like is much more immersive uh, environments. And and I look at something like uh, Second Life, and see how, how that that gives you a much more realistic view. And it's still pretty kludgy, but but to me, the future of social networking is is merging things like Facebook and Second Life into a truly immersive three D environment. And that's what we're trying to enable, because I think when you do that, you make you basically make the world a lot more real, a lot more interesting, um, a lot more dynamic. Uh, of course, that sells a lot more computing, which is good for our company. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a lot more fun. I mean, it's it's like taking uh, this whole world of 3D gaming, which is now you know extremely popular, and bringing that kind of realism to social networking. And once you can create a, an environment like that, you can start thinking about virtual classrooms. You can think about, you can start thinking about attending Berkeley from Santa Cruz without having to drive to Berkeley, things like that. It's all possible. And that's, that's the way I think it will evolve. I'm impressed with Intel. I'm hopeful for Intel. Um, and we'll see where it all goes. This is Shell Israel at Global Neighborhoods TV.